Hi everyone, Chris Petri here, and uh, welcome. Uh, please, uh, please consider subscribing if you're just new here and you're um, coming by for the first time. We make videos every weekend. Um, we do watercolors exclusively, um, so um, we have uh, new uh, new material, fresh material every week um, to uh, learn from, work from, and. Lots of great uh, insights. I try to bring all of the best uh, uh, knowledge I have to my watercolor um, videos here on YouTube. So I hope you'll enjoy them. Uh, again, uh, consider subscribing. This way you'll be notified every weekend when uh, our videos come out here. And um, <clears throat> this week we have uh, some uh, flowers here. And it's a really beautiful uh, look to this. It's very like soft. So we're going to have this soft feel to this, uh, to these flowers that we're going to paint. And uh, you can, I guess, um, if you have an, um, if you have a uh, phone or a laptop or a computer, um, iPad, something similar to those type of devices, you can hit pause on this photo that we have up right now and then uh, work from that. Or you can just work from the video as we as we work along. Uh, I know everyone works uh, differently on their uh, paintings, so let's get started here. I'm going to uh, readjust my camera once I lift this. Uh, so I have some things propping up. And then... And that should be good. And I'm just going to get my work area set up here. And uh, we're just going to start off with a mechanical pencil, uh, number seven. And it's retractable. Very good to work with. Um, so you, you always have a nice uh, sharp point uh, at the ready. And uh, we'll start off and we'll, we'll just create some flower shapes with our pencil drawing, our contour drawing. So we're just going to keep our hand on the paper and then start uh, on one of uh, any one of the sections of this painting. But before we actually do the contour drawing, let's do a, a quick... Um, light preliminary drawing just so we can kind of place where those flowers are going to be in our in our um, square here. I have more of a square look to this uh, on this uh, paper so our our frame around our painting is actually more square here but we'll, we'll kind of stick to the to the um, idea of let's just do the lightest of you might not even see this as I'm doing it I'm not sure if this will And again, the idea of just a preliminary so that we have the, um, the look we want, the flowers, the size that we need them, and the um, placement that we like in the composition, the overall composition here. So I have that pretty good. And I may, I may not need to do a second um, pencil drawing over this one. So as you work, you'll notice um, when you're contour drawing a lot and you're practicing a lot, you'll eventually get to the point where you sort of, you may not need to do the um, preliminary sketch, light, super light preliminary sketch first. You might be able to pretend you're going to do the light preliminary sketch, but then once you're completed with it, you might think it's just, it's good and it's uh, fine and you can paint, start painting right away. A 
All right, so now this might you might you probably can't see this on camera. I can see this on my monitor with my camera, so I think you can see this as well too. But let's go over with a darker um, contour drawing. So again, we did our super light preliminary sketch. Let's go over with our final contour drawing. So we get everything. Uh, and what's great about this super light preliminary sketch is you can use it as like a um, guide as you're doing your final drawing so that you sort of know where you have to be um, um, starting and stopping at your different points of your subject matter. It could be flowers, it could be a landscape, a seascape, it could be really anything that you're drawing. Um, you know, the human form, what, what, whatever you're actually drawing. If you have that really light sketch first, as you're doing your final drawing, you already have that sort of um, underlayment of a nice drawing that's going to help you to make sure you're not going off the page or out of the rectangle that you have drawn. So first we always make sure we get our rectangle drawn onto our paper. And then whatever subject matter we're working with, we know if we do this preliminary sketch first, everything will get placed in this rectangle perfectly, the way we want it, the way it looks in real life. And then if you have to, you can always, if you go out of the lines, you can always do a little bit of erasing. And, and again, a big help with a light preliminary sketch is if you do um, start to make something too big or too small, since you're going really, really super light with your sketch, your drawing, you can just easily erase with a nice kneaded eraser and um, take up some of the pencil lines and then kind of restart and readjust. But you might just leave the pencil lines on there too. You might not even have to erase it because it's so light. Always we try to always remember that the watercolor paint is always going to be cover most of the pencil lines if you do draw pretty light lines with your pencil. So you won't even hardly ever see those lines, those light pencil lines. But if you do tend to draw and you like those darker pencil lines, you're going to see those um, occasionally here and there within your painting. So I like pencil lines, so I like the, the darker um, pencil drawings on my, my paintings. But everyone's different, so you, you're the artist, you decide what you like. The look of your paintings and so I'll just go in now and now this is more fun for me to do, to do this contour drawing because we've already got this light sketch underneath so I can kind of concentrate more on the subject and here I'm not worried about I'm not worried about going around the flower like this. I'm just starting in one place and just traveling around through the drawing because I'm really focusing in on the shapes of each petal of the flower and not so much the outer perimeter of the flower or other shapes. I'm kind of just looking for each, focusing really uh, intently on the each petal of the flower so that makes it a little more fun because I'm not stressing really I'm just kind of just going along and looking at the subject matter the flowers in front of me and then as I start to get a comfortable feel I can pick up the pace a little bit and And if you're doing this in a slow pace, which is better as you're drawing, you can stop and just keep the pencil on the paper and hold it there until you kind of see the next angle you're going to uh, capture when you're drawing. And then if you see something where it's a easier shape to draw, then you can go faster. And then as you, if you have to slow down, you just slow down maybe do like little dots
and then I see some just some soft lines to um, <clears throat> so this looks like this is next to a window so this is like a window frame here so I'm just gonna lightly sketch that in and there's maybe another And there's a couple leaf uh, leaves and darker green uh, shapes in here, and we'll do those when we start painting. And I notice there's a few lines that look a little not not really looking like the the best with the angles. So I'm going to try to. better <clears throat> and then we have a darker dark here dark green sometimes I'll do those little shading lines in there just to kind of make sure I recognize that that's a darker dark there and there's a darker dark here and a darker dark up here like a dark green leaf here there's a leaf behind this here so little darks here and there all right so we're looking good and then we can start painting. We have our paint already set up in uh, fresh, clean water. And I think I'll start start out with the dark greens. Uh, so olive green, French ultramarine blue. Sap green. This is olive green, sap green. And a little bit a little bit of French ultramarine blue. Give it a little darker feel. And then we'll just get we'll get some of these darker darks in here. And this is a fun painting to do. Um, I'm using a medium size uh, brush. This is a Raphael number six, Kalinsky Sable round brush. And it's good to get the darks in first. A lot of times. Maybe with a little bit of chrome, chrome of oxide here. That's fun to sometimes. It's kind of that interesting green. And then maybe a little uh, wash the brush off a little bit. And I'll go into some burnt umber over here and then make maybe some more green, sap green, olive green. Kind of an interesting uh, brownish green color and we'll go with a lighter. So as you can see um, from the reference photograph, um, I'm going to block in my darks first. I'm going to add some more French ultramarine blue to the um, greens there. And uh, this is a lot of paint. I'm using a lot of paint and just a little bit of water, not, not much water at all. You could even 
you could even just use, actually I don't think I use much water at all, so I, I use it pretty much a damp brush that I dry off on a um, on my apron. So once I rinse my brush off, I dry it all off a little bit on the, the apron that I have on. And then I just go right into the paints and just use the paints. So for these darkest darks, um, I wouldn't use any water really so much. Maybe a, the dampness of the brush is all you would need. And I spritz my paints in my palette with water with a spritzer bottle before I start painting for about you know half an hour before. So when I do that it kind of activates the paint so I really don't need much water at this point at all as I'm painting. Just really using the straight paints right out of the palette. And from here it's really pretty simple. We can uh, start to mix um, some Cerulean blue. I'll leave some of that green in my brush, no problem. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and some uh, mineral violet, purple. And we can start, and then we would add a little more water. So I might make this more of a, a medium mixture of water, not a tremendous amount of water, just enough that it's kind of And then we could just go right in and then we might take this same mixture and we'll do the same mixture again down here. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, mineral violet, and then maybe add some uh, alizarin crimson. Just for a more of a, a little more of a, a reddish color. So we can have a little more of a, a pinkish red color along with the um, blue. And that'll be a nice uh, look. And we'll just start going right around, painting around. Now, here we can rinse the brush off, tap it on a paper towel or tissue to dry it off a little. And then we could work some of this lighter value into the flower shapes, the petals. splashing just to have some fun here while we're getting started and and we could also add in some uh, yellow ochre and I think what's really good here is if, if we just keep using these same mixes that we have in our palette will be fine. So in essence I mixed up what I needed first and then from there I'm just uh, painting. So my colors are all selected and I'm now I'm just using what's in the palette with a little bit of water on the brush. And again, we'll work in some uh, color into the petals for shadow shapes. And then we'll, we get a really interesting look of just plenty of colors and when we, we need more color we just remember what we mixed cerulean blue cobalt blue french ultramarine violet or mineral, mineral violet and then down here we did the same thing and then we just added a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of lizard and crimson down here so we use this same mix down here, and then we added just in a little warmer colors, the, the red and the, the yellow. And 
we'll just mix it around with a little bit of water and we'll just continue on here and things are going really well here we have plenty of And then as you go, you can look and just see what colors you might think you like to add to different sections as it as the paints work together and mix and mingle. So here I'll do the same mix again. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, French ultramarine, mineral violet. And all right, and so have fun with this, you know, go in there, leave definitely leave some whites as you go. Try to get those nice, subtle, light tonal values in your petals here and there. And, then that, and that gives you the great feeling of light in the, um, in the painting. And Again, some more of that burnt umber mix with a little bit of the green, a little bit of cerulean, and I see a couple more um, interesting. Uh, so these are kind of like a grayish color, you know. Like I mix in some grayish colors as we go. This is dry over here already, so we could do the window frame with like a warmer tone. Burnt umber, cerulean blue, like that. And the same here, we could use burnt umber, cerulean blue. Nice wood tone color and And then we'll put some uh, cadmium orange, burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow, and you come up with a nice uh, A little bit of cadmium yellow, maybe. And no need to be really fussy when you do the um, the flowers, you know, the shadows and the, the details of the flowers. No need to get overly, uh, let some colors bleed in a little bit here and there to mix in with the other. That always looks good, mixing the, the colors around the page everywhere or on the painting. Um, I like a little more splashing here and there, so I'm going to add some of that just to s sort of finish out the, the look here. And we can and then it's up to you if you want to add a little more um, Some blue, maybe and if you add in a couple little more dark uh, darker darks here and there, that can look good to sort of 
carve out the um, the um, petals of the flower to make them look more uh, interesting. But that's that's pretty good. We have some really interesting uh, flowers here, loosely done. We're not fussing too much, just getting the drawing done, and then going in and just doing our painting as we always as we always do. We go for the fresh look, painting it all at one time, a la prima. We mix up our colors first in the palette so that we're set with the colors we're going to use. We look at our drawing, our painting that we're looking, our, whether it's a, a real flowers that you're painting from, like a real uh, still life setup, or if you're working from a photograph or online, whatever you might be using for your reference material. If you kind of figure out your colors, you know, which can vary a little bit. You don't have to be exact. As I would say, you know, something close to what you're looking at is fine. And you get those out onto your palette. And once you have your colors set up, then you know if you're running out of a little paint, you remember, oh yeah, I used three blues here. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, French ultramarine with a little bit of mineral violet, purple. And then you can kind of see as you memorize your colors and work with your colors, you keep, you keep your same palette all the time. And as you do that, you just memorize your colors and then after a while, you'll just see the colors in the palette and you'll always know what to remix again in those areas because you're sort of, you're, all, you're, already, you're, you're more familiar now with the colors, let's say, when you're working with them, the same paint in your palette all the time. You'll just remember and you'll see the paint colors and know what you have to mix up a little more of as you're going. So you keep the painting with the same colors, which gives it a nice um, harmonized look versus if we keep mixing and matching colors all around, that can really disrupt the, the nice look of a painting. So if we can keep the same color scheme and keep the same colors going in the painting, choose them first, then just work with those colors. And then we have a nice uh, finished product here, a nice uh, flower painting. And I think this is pretty good. All right, we'll see you next time. Don't forget, please consider subscribing. Come back. We'll. We have alerts that go out. Once you subscribe, you'll get our um, alert next week, and we're going to paint another beautiful painting. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.